Mike's Daily Podcast. Ep- episode 910. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway. Here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley. Today, it's the return of the much loved feature, Do You Know Dat? With fascinating news you didn't know about. Plus, we hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Where the heck have I been? Oh, my friend, I've been on sabbatical. Mike's Daily Podcast. I guess that's one way of putting it. That and I did have, I just didn't have anyone to interview that was radical. Mike's Daily Podcast. To talk to, but we'll talk to some cool people later on this week. I'm noticing a paragraph of version in today's world of constant perversion going to hell in a hand basket or a basket with a sturgeon. This song has a slightly less silly version, but you don't want to hear it. It's too boring. Paragraphs aren't being used, but text likes daily podcast use is soaring on smartphones. But what the heck? Mike's people daily don't want podcasts to write paragraphs yeah! or read them. So it's quick Larry King's type sentences from here on out. That man, he predicted the future with his... Those of you who never read his news article, he used to have this article in the news, in the newspaper where he would just write in these short little blurbs. He's like, I think that hair is overrated. Talking on the radio is fun. I move my mouth bah, 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 and talk. We're living in a 140 character world and you just have to deal with it. Ooh, I ran out of characters there. Hey, did you know that I used to indulge when I was married with my ex-wife? I used to indulge in goofy pet talk. I recently, just a few minutes ago as a matter of fact, saw an old video that my ex-wife took of me as I was opening a birthday present that she had just given me. And I'm talking in this, oh, it's such a cute look at the writing on the package. The card is so nice. Oh my, the, oh my gosh. And the pet names and stuff that we called each other. It's so weird when you're out of a relationship and you don't use those pet terms anymore. You're just kind of like, yeesh, I did that? What? Who is that guy? I need to make this video completely unavailable online at all. Just, uh, no, I should upload it. You should see it. You need a good laugh. And where have I been? Yes, I have, like I said, been waiting to get some interviews lined up for this show. Plus, I was really busy last week. I had uh, two separate jobs pulling me in either directions. My car battery died. Uh, Let's see what else. No, that's pretty much it. That was too much stress for me. I couldn't do the podcast daily. Thank you for being patient with me. I'll, I'll get caught up. And, you know, we got a lot of stuff jammed into this podcast because I haven't done a podcast lately. So let's get this daily podcast going. Look, look who's walking in. Holla, holla, get dollar. Hey, look, it's Lee and the Jiggies. <laughs> what? <laughs> he, he told me before we started recording to call him Haley instead of Lee and the Jeggings. But I love the name Lee and the Jeggings. It's a stupid name. As well as jeggings are also stupid. No offense to people that wear jeggings, but your jeggings are stupid. So now you're just named Haley. I am named Haley. Do you know what I really... Why? So you're... Are you a guy or a girl? I, I'm... That's for the viewer to determine. All right. So we will be gender in specific. Of, of course. As as things should be. Should, I shouldn't... Target's defi- doing that. Really? Target is taking away all of their gendered signs and... The pink backdrops of their pink aisles and all of that stuff. But pink is a soothing color psychologically. They psychologically, say it is, and uh, blue is like the least soothing. Well, it's kind of soothing, but y- you won't be able to get to sleep with the color blue everywhere. I will guarantee you, as a heterosexual male, if a blonde, blonde on the hair, long hair, blonde, pink outfit, hot pink, will always attract my attention no matter what happens. I could be looking at all the most delicious food I've ever seen and if that walks by, I'm like, what the what? What the what? That doesn't sound soothing. What the what? You're right, it's not soothing. It's very anti-soothing. How are my levels? 
So, Haley, it's great to have you here. I love that hot pink dress you're wearing. Thank you. Um, I picked it out myself with my girlfriend. But don't you think that's gender specific? If you're wearing a dress, you're saying what you are, right? You're the dress oh. exists. I'm going to wear it. All right. Okay. So the, the dress, clothes don't define us. Clothes uh, can define us. As, as Haven't you seen what Avril Lavigne wears? Uh, that defines her. It does? She's really punk. Oh, okay. She's not does anyone punk. remember Avril Lavigne anymore? I remember, remember Avril Remember, this podcast appeals to an audience that's hip and now and new and just like me. No. Are you implying that Avril Lavigne isn't what's in nowadays? She still... She had a big impact on you, huh? Not really. I started listening to her like two years ago. What was your favorite song by her? Mm, Skater Boy. Um, she, she could a, make it a lot more obvious, by the way, in that song. Can I make it any more obvious? A little bit. Da 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 da. If, what more can you say? A lot. What more can I say? Yeah. Yeah, she was a fun little firecracker person. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I see a delay dump button here in Cafe anyway. Should I touch it? What would happen? I'm going to say nothing. Would we fall through a trap door in the um, floor of cafe anyway? We could. In that case, I'd say press it. Okay. I'm going to press it. I don't have a sound effect for that. Boop. Look who else just walked in. Hello, Michael Masters. This is Mad Tapega on Hello, Haley. How are you? Sorry. I was yawning dramatically. So, do you want me to predict your future? Yes. Oh, wow, this is going to be interesting. I predict that you are going to buy a dress today. You're going to buy a dress today? I could buy a dress today. You're going to buy a dress, Haley. I have really wide shoulders, so finding dresses is difficult. And the the hairy chest you have. I don't have a hairy chest. That is a lie. (laughs) So you did get a haircut, though, recently. I did get a haircut, and I'm planning on coloring my hair as well. I once got a haircut where I look like a gay ant. Ooh. I am a gay gay ant. You have a gay ant? I am a gay ant. Oh, you are? Okay. Uh, uh, No judging or anything. Gay ants. Does that mean that you make cookies for nice people because you're an ant? No. I I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. I just kind of crawl into your house and then I pick up small crumbs of food and I crawl out of your house again. Ah, okay. There was a song when I was a kid on one of the cartoons. I forget what it was, but there was a song that went, Robot Ants, Robot Ants. Remember that song? Someday there will be Robot Ants. You're looking at me as if I have completely, I've lost you. I've lost, okay. So remember that one time that Scooby-Doo met the Harlem Globetrotters? Tell me about that time. I don't remember that time really well. Well, there was basketball involved. Did Shaggy go, zoinks? At some point. I think... And Scooby Stop me if I'm wrong on this. Uh-huh. This is probably an outlandish, uh, like, like assumption, but probably somewhere in that episode, Velma lost her glasses. <gasps> no! I know! I have yet to someday marry Velma. Someday. I will. Mar- Who played her? The girl that played her in the movie was hot. The uh, live. Who, Rob action. Black? <laughs> now you're just saying names of people you produce their shows for. That's true, but he did dress up as Rob Black at one, uh, as Velma for Halloween at one time. He did? Yeah. That's funny. So, oh. if, if any of you listening to this know who Rob Black is, that's some not insider up. information because I think he actually wore it on his TV show. He's a popular TV personality. Kind that, of. That we kind of work with. We, we, you definitely work with. You I do. You produce his show. Uh, I was going to bring up some topic today about... Oh! Texting. Um, tell me, Haley... Do you get annoyed by people that when they text, they text you in little bursts and they, they just keep sending you messages, but they don't like put the whole thing. They just put like little bits at one time and your phone just keeps going ding, ding, ding. And no, buggy. I love it. It makes me feel like I talk to more people. So you like that constant, like, why don't you just put it all in one paragraph? Because sometimes like you have moments of inspiration like as soon as you press the send button and I and you're like I need to send this as well and also pressing the return button doesn't have the same effect on a text 
but it's, it doesn't have the same effect. Like spacing out a text doesn't uh, have the same effect as just putting it in another text. Plus, everyone has unlimited texting nowadays. Uh huh. So whatever, oh, man. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Make the most of it. All right. Now I'm gonna listen back to this later, and then I'll completely understand what you said. Sure. I t- texted a girl recently. As as Ooh. you know, I'm single. And uh, this girl isn't interested in me, so I don't know why I wasted this many texts on her, but we had a really fun conversation because I was on my way to see Michael Shaw perform, and I was telling her what I was seeing on the BART. And I I, I would like to read you some of this, if I may. Sure. Um, can you give me a little music? Uh, do, 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 do. She said... Do. Uh, oh no! Here, here! I said, uh, I'm taking bar right now to see a singer I interviewed. I'm going to the city. I'm surrounded by oddities, and she wrote, "Tell me about the oddities." So I did, Haley. There's a young twenty-something girl, completely bald, like me, a guy who looks like British actor Bill Nye. Do you know who he is? The science guy. Bill Nye. Bill Nye the Science Guy? No, that's... Everybody... That poor guy gets confused with that other guy all the time. Bill, Bill, Bill. But this guy was stomping his feet. Uh, I will have to go into another car to find more oddities, I said. And then... She said yesterday... Oh, tell me about this, Haley. What do you think about this, Haley? It's very soothing, Haley. Haley, stop brushing my head. As if I had hair. Trying to make me fall asleep. Yesterday, a guy was blaring music, she said. How do people not know that that's not okay? On a BART, blaring the music. Yeah, I don't get that. They, like, set it up, too. This this one time I was on BART, and these two kids came in, and they had, like, a boombox. Uh-huh. And they specifically, like, sent it on the floor in between their two seats. Oh, my god! It was total, like, on off hours. So, like, we were probably the only ones on the train to be annoyed. But we were still annoyed. Yeah. The, it, but they danced? They didn't dance. They didn't dance. They just blew the music. No, it, it would have been fine if they were like, all right, let's break down. But no. I wrote to her, what do they want, a flash mob? And she said, ha, 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 we should just give them what they want. And I said, if it's Miley Cyrus or Taylor Swift music, I have an interpretive dance. And she says, it's already prepared. And I said, well, I need access to a wrecking ball and several supermodel dancers. And she said, that's easy. And I said, ha, ha, Tay Tay and May May, let me... I wrote Tay Tay and May May. Oh, Tay Ta- Taylor. Swift and Miley Cyrus. Tay Tay and May May let May let me borrow those. Oh, they let me borrow those all the time. Because she said uh, we need. I was uh, on a flash mob once. I said supermodels are really easy to feed. You were. You'd a- think so, but they're probably really picky. What? Yo, yeah, it's got to be. I'm not saying they're the most. Uh, they don't eat much, but they eat the most expensive stuff. Yeah, they're, so they're not going to be easy to feed. You're right. Yeah. You got to take their order, and then maybe they'll change their mind. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Hey, Bison, look. It's Haley. Hi. Hey, Haley. Hi. Do you want to be my friend? No. I don't have any friends. Uh, Do you know that? No, no. We'll be friends together. What? We'll go out to baseball games and stuff. Will Come on. You, will you pay me? No, I don't have any money. Neither do, you know do I. You guys are going to be... You, you guys have become fast friends. I, I feel we have. The thing about the supermodels... Wait, oh, flash mob. Flash mob, yeah. I was yeah. in a flash mob once. And how did that go? Um, The entire flash mob situation, like... Uh, we did it a couple times because I was in a choir, and so occasionally. Um, Wait a minute, let me ask you. I this is Valentino, first time call, hey. long time listener. Yeah. Haley, tell me, when you was, was dancing, did you catch fire and go up in like a flash of smoke? Day? No, no. All right, we, let me ask no, you one more question, if I may. First time call, long time listener. Day. I, I appreciate. I would like to ask you this question, Haley. Yes. 
I find myself oddly attracted to you. But my question to you is... Okay. They... Uh, did you flash people because it was a flash mob day? No, it's a flash mob because they just suddenly appear and they start to dance. We did right, throw flash really. grenades, but that's really the only way we could get anyone to stick around was just oh. by knocking, knocking them out and stunning them. You realize, Valentino, that Haley may, may or may not be a, a woman. Well, I'm confused. I don't know what. I need to sit down and breathe into a bag. Day. All right, he's going to deal with that. And That's fine. Be fine. That's okay. fine. That's not the first time I've gotten that. Tell me more about your flash mob. So, uh, yeah, we were in the choir, and we didn't actually do any dancing or anything, but we were an a cappella choir. So it was like, oh, we're waiting at the airport. Let's sing. Or, you know, oh, we're here and we don't have anything else to do. Let's sing. Or, oh, we don't have permission to sing inside the Lincoln Memorial. Let's sing inside the Lincoln Memorial and hope we don't get arrested. What, what did you sing in the Lincoln Memorial? Well, I was at a Christian college, so it was like Christian songs. Also what? patriotic songs because it was Washington, D.C. Christian songs like Baby, Baby, I'm Taken with the Notion. Yes. To love you with the sweetest of devotion. Basically Except anything. imagine that with like a hundred acapella voices. Amy Grant, right? Anything Amy Grant sings is Christian? Pretty much. Uh, actually, we did some Skillet as well. Like, What does Skillet do? Feel like a monster! I, I <laughs> feel like a monster! You looked like you were going through such pain when you were singing just then. It's skillets. I, I uh, go through much pain when listening to them. Uh, was the Plain White Tees a Christian band? Hey mm. there, Delilah, don't no. you know this? I don't think so. Kansas about- was a Christian band briefly. Kansas? Kansas. No. Yeah, right after Dust in the Wind, like their next album was primarily Christian. How about Jars of Clay? Jars of Clay, their first album, is the finest, in my opinion, the finest example of acoustic rock ever, like, made by man. Even if it is entirely And Christian. if I spend it yes! in 40 yes! days in a yes! God, I love that album. Lift me up. I still love that I'm album. When I'm suffering. Lift me up. Jesus is good to me. Lift me up. See, you got it. I have Mark, stop that day. You're making us all laugh, he. Yeah, you dancing and singing Christian rock. Do you know that? Um, My chair is squeaking a lot. I hope you can pick this up. I hope this is going to be entirely in the background. That's the squeakiest chair here at Cafe anyway. We it had is. you sit at, on at least, it, Haley. At least it's not one of those chairs that, like, one of the... One of the legs is shorter than the other legs, so it's just like kathunk, kathunk. Did you like j- any of Jars of Clay's later stuff? Um, I don't like their modern stuff. Uh, their second album was okay. Was it called Flood? No, no. The song you were singing is oh, called Flood. Flood. Yeah, I don't remember what all, any that, of the other ones was called. I'm gonna go listen to that. Um, that was a good album. The first one, yeah. yeah. It's called Jars of Clay. Okay. Self entitled. How about Eponymous. Switchfoot? Mm. Were you into Switchfoot? Not really. We and Ed. What was their song? I don't remember. It's been too long. Uh, um, I, I remember listening to like Wow 2000. There was one of those had this song. I think it was by a guy called Chris Rice, and it was like, "What if all these cartoon characters were Christian?" And it was basically like every single catch line of like the big Hanna Barbera or whatever the cartoons were at the time, uh-huh. like the classic cartoons, except like at the end he would just uh, say "Ooya" as in like "Hallelujah." So it was like "Scooby Dooby and it was really uh, weird. Are you talking about Veggie Tales? No, no, oh. Veggie Tales is an entirely different thing. Okay, um, very but, Christian though. It's very Christian. Uh, my favorite Veggie Tales is the Christmas one where they had the silly songs with Larry, where uh, Larry uh, is giving away all the cookies. It's really funny. Oh, all right. Trust me on that. Okay. Yep. Well, I guess we've learned a lot today from you, Haley. Ding, 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 ding. Um, and you enjoyed, uh, did you want to ask Madame Rudebeg anything? Are those dreads real hair? That is my real hair! And I know I just didn't wash my hair. It's dreadlocked now. That's gross. 
but you can touch it. It's magical. Will you pay me? I will pay no one and ooh. I'm Our, not going to touch your hair then. Um, I think we learned a lot today. Thank you, Haley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, clapping really hard is fun. So what do you think about the world of texting? Do you text one little thing at a time and just, or do you write in full paragraphs? And do you like Christian pop music? And we were meant to live for so much more. I dare you to move. I dare you to... That's Switchfoot. Okay. Uh, you can email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email and your common, not so comments. You can comment there on Twitter at Mike Talks. Also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. Also, go to Mike's Daily Podcast.com to find where you can listen to the show in iTunes. You can comment on the show and rate the show there. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. We are also on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, Mixcloud, Spreaker, Player FM, and Ameristream Live. And if you want to hear a huge swath of country music, I am on a country internet station called Country Crossroads every weekend from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. A link to that at mikesdailypodcast.com. If you want to help us out too and you're shopping on Amazon all the time, go through the link at mikesdailypodcast.com. You just click on that link, buy whatever it is you're going to buy on Amazon. And that helps us out if you go through mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you want to become a Mike's Daily Podcaster and get a special personalized MP3 for thee from all the Cafe Anyway characters and the podcast players, you can also go to mikesdailypodcast.com for that. There's the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews are there as well. It's Bison Bentley's. Do you know that? Hey, this is Bison Bentley. Mike Matthews has a couple of stories that'll make you want to ask yourself, Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know that? One, two, three, four. Come on, baby, say you love me. Five, six, seven, nine. One, two, one, two, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, check, 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 check. That's what we say when we're checking to make sure we have levels, as we say, that we're actually recording something. Uh, but yeah, one, two, three, four, Miami Sandwich and Gloria Estefan, who's all happy about the whole Cuba thing, I bet. Or not. Maybe she's Marco Rubio disgusted. Whatever. But Splash Data, a password management service in Los Gatos, the cats, has released its latest list of the 25 most common passwords found on the internet thus making them the worst passwords that will expose anybody to being hacked or having their identities stolen. This according to the Pod Castro Valley Forum. In its fourth annual report compiled from more than 3.3 million leaked passwords during the year, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and password continue to hold the top two spots that they have held each year since the first list in 2011. Other passwords in the top 10 that are horrible include QWERTY, DRAGON, and FOOTBALL. The passwords evaluated for the list were mostly held by users in North America and Western Europe and showed that many people continue to put themselves at risk by using weak, easily guessable passwords. Passwords based on simple patterns on your keyboard remain popular despite how weak they are, according to the CEO of Splash Data, Morgan Slane. Any password using numbers alone should be avoided, especially sequences, as more websites require stronger passwords or combinations of letters and numbers. Longer keyboard patterns are becoming common passwords, and they are still not secure. For example, users should avoid a sequence such as QWERTY UIOP, which is the top row of letters on a standard keyboard, or 1QAZ2WSX, which comprises the first two columns of numbers and letters on a keyboard. Other tips don't use a favorite sport as your password. Baseball and football are in the top 10, and hockey and soccer and golfer are in the top 100. 
Don't use a favorite team such as Yankees, Eagles, Steelers, Rangers, and Lakers. Those are all in the top 100. Don't use your birthday or especially just your birth year. Tips to be safe from hackers online include using passwords of eight characters or more with mixed types of characters. Avoid using the same username password combination for multiple websites. And use a password manager to organize and protect passwords, generate random passwords, and automatically log in to websites. Oh, it's a brave new world we live in. And Michael Penn. As I told Michael Shaw, one of my favorite uh, singer-songwriters. That's from the album March, one of my favorite albums. Now I've told you too much about myself, and I feel exposed. So now the company Google is extending the strategy of becoming the internet provider from land and air uh, to hardware with OnHub a Wi-Fi router designed to be placed on a table or countertop in the center of your home, Google promises to speed up everyone's internet connection and make setup easier. This according to PopSci.com. The router packs impressive specs, about 1,900 millibits per s of speed over 13 antennae. Most consumer routers top off at 300 MBPs, so OnHub would be a leap for the average consumer. It also has 4 GB of on-router storage for updates and software, which is the most interesting part of Google's newest hardware. The company recently announced Brillo, their operating system for internet-connected devices, and they made it look nice. It looks like a little blue cup sitting on the counter of your kitchen, and they want you to put it on your kitchen counter it's advantageous for the router's signal, which is omnidirectional. 